The XRP lawsuit is ending soon. Of course, this is SEC versus Ripple started back in December of 2020. Here we are almost four years into this lawsuit and the conclusion is finally coming. At the end of this episode, I'm gonna give some analysis on where we're at and why the decision is running behind from Judge Torres. But in the meantime, we gotta cover what else is taking place in this world, which is absolutely crazy. Markets back down, wiping out the gains of yesterday. And this is upon the fears of, you know, that we're actually still heading into a recession. Even if the Fed does emergency rate cuts, it's still not gonna stop that. We've already been in a wage recession. We already have been in an earnings recession. And this is all taking place before the World War III events actually escalate further, which is where I'm going to start out this episode by sharing with you guys here. Take a look at it. This is Iran warns civilian airlines worldwide to avoid its airspace due to military exercises. We move on over. Syrian fighters breach Al Omar oil refinery. This is unconfirmed, but we're seeing a gunfight taking place here at the edge of this oil refinery. If this is true, this would be the first oil field that the U.S. has lost control of in Syria if they are able to actually get in there and take this over. That's from Mario Nafal. Inside paper, Russian border region introduces state of emergency amid Ukrainian attacks. Back to Mario Nafal. The U.K. is bracing for over 100 protests tonight. The U.K. is expecting a surge in planned protests with over 100 demonstrations reportedly planned up from initially anticipated 30. Thousands of police officers are on standby to manage the situation. We continue. Israel's ambulance services stocked blood supplies in a fortified underground center. And we've been hearing of other supplies in a lot of other operations going underground in Israel right now. Factories have moved out hazardous materials and municipal authorities are checking bomb shelters and water supplies as the country waits for a threatened attack from Iran and its proxies. Now, we noted how Trump said that an attack on Israel is coming. He said this in the interview two days ago on the Aiden Ross live show. And so ever since then, we've been watching very closely the movements. The word on the ground is that there's preparations being made, and this could take place at any time. But as I highlighted, you got activity in Syria. You got activity over in uh, Ukraine, Russia. We have it taking place in Iran and Israel, Lebanon. The, you know, and, and then at the same time, take a look at this one right here from Zero Hedge. Hey, Grok, why is China stockpiling copper as if it's preparing for war? So China stockpiling copper as if it's preparing for war. And we know that they've been you know, licking their lips, looking at Taiwan and the potential to take that. And so this is what I've been warning about is that although the market pumped yesterday off the expectation that the Fed might come in and cut rates and this is going to save the day, we'll still achieve a soft landing and everything's going to be a OK and we'll live happily ever after. The market wasn't priced in World War Three escalation. That's a problem. And the market still doesn't think that we're going to go into a recession, which is going to be a fatal mistake. <clears throat> and let me clarify that it's because. Even if we don't go into a technical recession per the GDP, we're already in a jobs recession and we've already been in an earnings recession. And so I think it's completely dishonest to listen to the talking head pundits on CNBC say that we're going to avoid a recession. If you're speaking directly on the GDP numbers, yeah, maybe the government spending will keep you know, running deficits, will keep up the government spending and we'll be able to avoid a recession on paper when it comes to GDP growth. But when we look at jobs already in a recession, when we look at the earnings already been in a recession. And so <clears throat> this is why I think uh, this, this is the correction that's continuing right now. The S&P 500 is now down 115 points from its high of the day and down over 0.5% on the day. Even as the Bank of Japan has backtracked on their more hawkish policy, markets are struggling to hold a rally. Investor confidence appears to be deteriorating. Well, think of how fragile our system is if a 25 basis point rate increase. They raised by a quarter percent, Bank of Japan. And it was about to blow up the whole system. It was a global margin call starting there in Japan, and it was about to spread worldwide. Now, and it still is. And as I said, we're, we haven't even started to unwind this debt. Think of the commercial real estate back here in the United States that's already going through a reset, restructuring, right? This is debt that was financed when rates were at 0%, 1%, and you could lock in commercial debt at 1%, 2 3%. Mortgages for single-family residences were at 2 and 3%, right? And then we doubled that, and now the rate's you know, 5 6% plus. And 
This is something that we've been warning about is going to cause an unwinding of debt worldwide. It's not just the carry trade in Japan. This is kind of the spark, but we still have a lot more to come. And so let's take a look here at where the markets are at right now. This would be Bitcoin at uh, 54,780. As I'm recording this, it is moving back down. And this is after it traded up to 57,600. So after getting cleaned out, 30% correction down to 48,000 on Monday when the markets opened up, we've bounced back up here to 57,000, but now we've almost wiped out the gains from yesterday completely. For Ethereum, we already did wipe out the gains from yesterday completely. For XRP, not quite yet, but it's moving down just dip below 50 cents. If you're getting ready to buy assets on sale, well, take a look at it. This is why we've had our dry powder. We're ready to make the moves. Here's your gold below 2400, still holding strong, but moving back down today. Silver just broke below $27 per ounce. We're at $26.65. If you're looking for silver on sale, well, there you have it. But like I said, S&P 500 already wiped out the gains from yesterday. NASDAQ 100 already wiped out the gains from yesterday. Dow Jones, same thing. Wiping out the gains from yesterday completely and ready to break down lower watch out closely. We are not done. We are not in the clear. Now, as far as where we roll into a new system, I wanted to share this one from Sal, uh, Saul here, one of the XRP community members, bringing up an old, uh, old picture here from Ripple Labs and Chris Larson. Back to the future, gold standard, but in a cryptocurrency kind of way, math-based currency movement. The focus is on the erosion of trust in political currencies, which is what fiat currencies are worldwide and why they're failing worldwide. It's just a matter of how fast is your fiat currency in your local country failing. The solution is trust and math relationship of servers in a distributed network. The beautiful thing about the XRP ledger obviously is no proof of work. There's no mining to be done, but we are running a consensus model that once again puts trust in math relationship of services in a distributed network and it removes no central authority to debase the money supply in a fixed amount that can't increase. There's your full graphic. So we got gold standard, but in a cryptocurrency kind of way. The problem is, is that it's hard to put gold on Bitcoin. It's, you know, you know, and, and once again, we're seeing tokenized assets show up on the XRP ledger and others. Is XRP going to get all the money? No, we don't need to get all the money. We just want to be ready for a significant amount of the liquidity that's coming into this space through tokenization, we want to be ready for that. And we are. So this is a beautiful setup as you know, as I just shared with you guys right here, China stockpiling copper. Well, it's not just gold, it's copper, it's other commodities. And this goes back to the resource and the commodity currency war, right? This is not just a battle that's being fought right now on the ground, right? Uh, where we got one side on the other versus their you know adversary on the other side of the battlefield. This battlefield has now gone into multi-dimensional. Literally, we're fighting it in the internet with cyber attacks. We got a commodity war over the resources that actually run the planet, and then we got a battle over currencies. And this is what the what happened with Japan here recently is their currency strengthened because their central bank raised by 25 basis points, and it was about to blow up the whole thing. And as we reported on, the market was rallying yesterday. We said, don't, don't, uh, don't get too excited just yet. We're not in the clear. Now, what we should be getting excited for is this digital asset space, though, because we have Donald Trump Jr. dropping another tweet this morning. We're about to shake up the crypto worldwide. We're about to shake up the crypto world with something huge. Decentralized finance is the future. Don't get left behind. Hashtag crypto, hashtag DeFi, hashtag be defiant. So you guys let me know your speculation on what the Trump team is going to be dropping in regards to DeFi here. Massive for the space. Just massive. And so I just have been dropping a video this morning talking about how Trump is going to flip the switch. It's just very clear what we're going to get with Trump. With Kamala Harris, they're in the middle of a cryptocurrency policy reset. And I will respond to those policies because we'll, we'll you know, hedge our position. Even though I do think that Trump wins, I, that's just how I think it's going to play out historically. Not afraid to say that, but I will cover just to cover our basis and hedge our position. What would happen if the Kamala Harris, uh, you know, team wins, and then we'll see uh, what they're going to be up to. We know they're not willing to come out and say they're going to fire Gary Gensler. We know that they're not willing to come out and say that they're going to cut taxes and cut regulation. And so we're going to cover that when they do come out, hopefully soon, with a policy. In the meantime, we know we know what's coming from Team Trump here, 
and it's a lean in. It's a go all in on cryptocurrency. We need to be the leaders worldwide. If it's not us, it's going to be China. Let's get it done. And I love to see that because what this is going to do is it's going to bring investment dollars, not just into crypto, but back to the United States investment landscape for every industry. This is why I call it the Trump pump will commence. Now take a look at this one, folks. This is interesting. Right here, this is a tweet that I retweeted uh, from Joshua Jake. This is actually fake. This is not true what he said. BlackRock bought the Ondo dip. That's not true. They bought the USDC token issued by Ondo Finance. So that's misinformation shared by Joshua Jake. Uh, I'll leave it at that. But nonetheless, I wanted to respond because down here below, somebody sent BlackRock some XRP. Now, it's only 16 cents worth of XRP, but we need to take a look at this one, folks. I'm going to look at this one further. I'll report back on it. I wasn't going to clickbait everybody and say, oh, BlackRock has XRP. Even though, even though, even though I'd love to send BlackRock some XRP so they can get started with their process. I, I, I highly suspect that they're going to be launching an XRP ETF or a basket ETF that does include XRP. But either way, somebody jumped the gun here. They're already sending BlackRock some XRP. So that is true. Uh, did BlackRock buy the Ondo dip? No, they bought USDC on the Ondo platform. Big difference. But they are getting XRP sent to them by somebody. So I'll be looking back at that on Arkham Intelligence. They've been doing a great job of sharing uh, the information on chain data. So I will report back further on that one. But you guys let me know in the comments down below. You think that BlackRock is getting ready to launch that XRP ETF or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's talk this case. I wanted to re respond to this comment here from Fred Rispoli. Because if you're feeling like this case should be over, if you're ready for this case to be done, I feel you. I have sympathy for you. And you're right. It is not normal that this remedies phase waiting for the final ruling from Judge Torres should take this long. This is not normal. We should be getting a ruling soon. Fred Rispoli says it should not take this long. There are benign factors, including vacations, huge case log, and potentially ominous ones. It's fairly obvious by now, though, that Torres and Netburn spoke about the expert issue still pending before the Netburn, uh, before Judge Netburn, and that it will be irrelevant to the Torres ruling. And this is Fred responding to Yasin Mubarak, saying that he finds it strange that the case is taking so long. And so Fred's saying, yes, you're right, you are correct. The expert witness, Andrea Fox, well, this is what's going to be decided, is whether or not Andrea Fox is a summary or expert witness. They brought in Andrea Fox after discovery had closed. Of course, this is the SEC. Of course, they don't follow the rules. They just try to shove in additional evidence in the, uh, you, you know, <clears throat> in, you know, after summary judgment basically has been issued and uh, the discovery phase has been closed. And so leave it to the SEC to try to break and bend the laws further in their favor. But they're trying to, you know, say that this is an expert witness who was basically trying to carve up Ripple's expenses and say that not all of their expenses can be, uh, you, know, you know, basically put towards their on-demand liquidity sales to institutions. And so not really that big of a deal, as Fred says right here in his post, that uh, it's obvious by now that the Torres and Netburn have spoke about the expert issue still pending before Netburn, and it will be irrelevant to the Torres ruling. So basically, it's not going to make a difference as far as how big of a fine, penalty, disgorgement, with interest included, Ripple will have to pay for their bad behavior, right? And so once again, this case is set to end any time now. We are late. Uh, you know, it should be here. And I've been saying that I think that it does come down this month or uh, by September uh, or, or, or uh, sorry, by the end of September at the very latest. So within the next two months, here in August, here in September, this case is set to end. This is an, an inevitability. This is imminent. This is not up for de debate or dispute, right? This case will end. Will the SEC appeal? Well, of course they could. But the end of this case, and as far as Ripple's business, what can they do going forward? We get an answer on it in the next couple months, most likely. We're already late. It's unlikely that this gets you know, extended out much further than that. So if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling worn out, just understand that we are close. We are crazy. I'm not going to deny that the XRP community is crazy. I'm very proud of our convictions, our, our beliefs, the foundation of what we're fighting for. I believe in it 110%. And I want to remind everybody that it's not just me that's trying to hype this thing up. It's the lawyers themselves that are saying that we are behind schedule. We should be getting this rolling here soon. 
And so strap in because it's inevitable, it's imminent, and you guys let me know what you think it's going to do to XRP price-wise. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up this session. If you appreciate our updates, please make sure to like this video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and everything can be found on my website, ZachRector.com. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.